having this in season tournament, you're trying to win it. Go big or go home. Uh, get your game face on. Uh, I need a scene on that throne. Let's go. The stage is set. Let's go. So time. on the line, so we're going for that. We are here, and guys, only two teams remain. Of course, it started with 30, and now the inaugural in-season tournament comes down to the Lakers and the Pacers. It's the old guys versus the young guys. We've got one final matchup to see who will take home the NBA Cup. We're getting set for tip in the next 30 minutes to see who will take home $500,000, which, by the way, I would take that if they were willing to give it to me. Welcome to NBA Hoop Streams. Uh, we got a little squad here. Neo joining yeah, the yeah. show. Yeah, RJ, yeah. you know him. I'm Christine Williamson. And Neo pointed out that we're all rocking the same haircut. They're, they're, I think you're doing it the best. Though. I know that. You're, you're crushing I, I, We're aware of that part. But we all, we all look pretty good. Yeah, we look good. We're ready for the occasion. Yes, we are. Uh, we're locked Neo. In. You're singing the national anthem. Now yes. I heard, we heard you earlier mm -hmm. um, in the rehearsal. Somebody told you it sounded like a mixture between what Marvin Gaye and Whitney Houston. Yeah, huge shoes to fill. Wow. It, was, it was a compliment, but no thanks. That's that's, that's <laughs> a lot of pressure. It's a whole lot of pressure. It did sound very good. It sounded very good. Thank you. I uh, you're it. from here yes. in Las Vegas. This is obviously the first in-season tournament championship. Mm -hmm. What is it like being able to witness it here and obviously send the national anthem? Well, yeah, I, I went to high school here, man. Las Vegas Academy alumni. Peace and love. Uh, uh, nan, nan, and boo boo to all my high school haters sitting at home <laughs> watching the game. You see, you, you can't see my feet, but you see I'm on the wood, damn, but I'm on the wood. Um, it feels great, man. It feels amazing. You know, uh, uh, Vegas and this, this, uh, uh, the, the whole sports thing that's happening in Vegas now is new, but I feel like it's, it's going to be a fantastic home for it. I'm um, looking forward to this game. Go Lakers, by the way, if anybody's wondering. Go Lakers. Uh, and, uh, yeah, man. It's going to be fantastic. Are you going to be able to keep saying go Lakers when they get a team here? Or are you a forever a Laker team? Because once you get uh, your representation, that's that's once true. you get your representation, I feel like there is a team coming to Vegas. You talked about the sports vibe happening. Are you going to be able? You could stay a Lakers supporter, but you got to start Vegas. And you gotta, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, man. I, I feel like that's that's flip floppy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I got to I got to say true. You know, me and all my uncles. That's my my earliest NBA memory is sitting around with my uncles watching the game, watching the Lakers do what they do. Uh -huh. So okay. I've been a Lakers fan forever. Still a Lakers fan. Lakers through and through. Okay. Okay. Can we talk about a guy that plays for the Lakers? Because LeBron James has been here for a yeah, minute. Yeah. The immortal. He's, he's getting up there. Yeah. I said old guys versus the young guys. How has it been watching LeBron now that he's 38 years old, still doing his thing? Well, you know, I'm I'm 44 years beautiful, Woo. and um, I, what I've learned is aging is mandatory for all of us. Now, aging poorly, that's up to us, and that man is not aging poorly at all. Uh -huh. you know, he's he's as fresh as he ever been, and uh, he's gonna show y'all that tonight. As if as, if I do say so myself, I think it's gonna be fantastic. So you're talking about aging gracefully, this yes. man. So do you think? After all of these years, you've been watching since before he came into the league, you know this thing. Do you uh, think that this man's got enough to lead the Lakers here? That's your pick? I absolutely think that he has enough. And uh, I think it's somewhat blasphemous to even ask me that question. This man, I gotta ask. I gotta the, man ask. Is, the man is immortal. <laughs> I got to ask. LeBron James is made of steel, damn it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Made of steel. I agree. I agree. Well, Neo, uh, you got to go because you have things He's got, to do. He got to sing the national anthem. Do, 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 hey, by the way, those are next time Marvin Gaye, Marvin Gaye, Gay, Whitney. Listen, then soon it's going to be the Neo. It sounds it's good. Gonna it's going to be the really Neo. Good. That's what we're going to get. <laughs> we're going to make it work. Yeah. Thanks, Neo. Thanks. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> All right, so now we're welcoming in Ryan Windhorse. We're going to play a little game. It's called Heads on Six. Very simple. Uh, where we got some sick heads here. Oh. And you guys are going to, because, you know, we're in Las Vegas. Oh, yeah, we you got You can it. be literally anybody here. Yeah. So you guys are going to pretend to be certain people that we are very familiar with. Okay. Uh, RJ, you're going to start us off. You're okay. taking that head right okay, there. Okay, I'm taking one. this one. That is Tyrese Halliburton. Okay. So go on and put it on, because that's okay. you. Um, okay, so Tyrese. Yes. Obviously, you have had a breakout season. Yes. A lot of people are talking about you being a superstar in this league, but what do you think that your ceiling is? Well, I think, I think for me, the biggest thing is what took y'all so long to realize I was a superstar? <laughs> right now, Sacramento, are they regretting trading me? Most likely. Uh -huh. They see what the next 10, 12 years is going to look like in this league, and it's going to be my league. I think the only thing that they were sure about is they wanted me to, they wanted to trade me to another conference, so I wasn't whipping their ass 
four times a year. So uh, I'm looking forward to winning this thing tonight uh -huh. uh, and putting LeBron and his old butt home. Okay. I like that. Okay. That was pretty uh, accurate. I, like I think this, it was accurate. This old guy, new guy thing, I feel like we're never going to stop talking about it, but you're not necessarily an old guy. Well, maybe, I don't know. I would never call Adam Silver an old I guy. I just wanted to have the same haircut as, every, <laughs> as everybody. Yeah. Wait, that's so true. That's true. Now you're now, now you're four fit. baldies here. <laughs> okay, so Adam Silver, obviously, this was your vision, and it's now come to life. What has it been like being able to watch the inaugural in-season tournament? Have you heard life? LeBron James call me a genius twice this week alone? Uh, if LeBron James says I'm a genius. I must be a genius. And this is going great. You know what my best the thing that I did so far in this whole in-season tournament? I've got the Lakers in the final. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, do you know how hard it was? It took a lot of work, but we did it. We're so excited to have the Lakers in the final. All right, Adam. So you just mentioned a guy, the old guy, that will pull out oh. right now. RJ, you are now the LeBron James. Yes. And we always talk about how old you are. 38 years, 20 years in the league. Do you feel like you'll be the first player to really defeat Father Time? Uh, well, you know, I don't know if I can really defeat Father Time, but I know I put in a lot of work every single day. Uh, uh, me and my trainer, Mike Mancius, uh, we, we spend a lot of money on our tra training, making sure that, uh, you know, our mind is as, st as sharp as our body. And, you know, I see the young guys out there playing, and, you know, I'm just trying to do my best, make sure my team gets involved. Uh, but, but ultimately, I think this is great for the NBA. This is great for the Lakers, uh, and I'm just glad to be a part of it. But, yeah, am I the greatest player of all time? Yes, and, uh, and I'm just annoyed that everyone else doesn't recognize it. <laughs> It's like, how much longer do I need to play to show you guys that I am the greatest? That's all that matters. We want to talk about rings. We want to talk about other things. Yeah. I'm the greatest player to ever walk the planet Earth. Okay. Uh, LeBron, thank you. So You're welcome. Us. RJ, pretty good LeBron impersonation, I would say. It's okay. I think it's not so. like a very good. You should have been like, I'm playing for the 500. No, 500. Yeah, 500. 500. <laughs> Okay, so RJ, I, we talked a little bit about your outfit earlier, yes. which we'll talk about a little bit more in a second, because as you know, you were out on the red carpet. Yes. You got to hang out with some of the guys, talk yeah. about what they were wearing. So this is another installment of Richard's Runway. I dress to impress diamonds on my neck. I am way too fresh. Okay, so we're going to talk about some guys they showed up today. Woo, Bron. This is you slash him. Yeah, he's, he's him. See, the, when, listen, when you're wearing a jean jacket, that's a work jacket right there. He's coming to work. Tyrese, though. Oh, this man. He's he, really been pulling out the shimmer he lately. Has. You know what I liked about him? He went first day of school. He said, I had my fit picked out ahead of time. And oh, I like that they got Bruce Brown in the slow motion the here. The rodeo is in town. Oh, yeah. Hey, listen, there's a new sheriff in town, and his name <laughs> is Bruce Brown. How you doing, Bruce Brown? Looking sharp. The cowboy hat, when he tipped it it's to you. It's very Vegas. Oh, it's very Vegas. Yeah. Love it. I love the cowboy hat. Also, go Canes, because I went to Miami, he went to Miami. Hey, look, he had a whole cane outfit on uh, day one. But Anthony Davis, just classic, just sharp. That is that Gucci? Oh, that's Gucci. That's, that's a Gucci. Of... That's a Gucci T-shirt, a Gucci jacket. The second most impressive leather jacket in the building after, <laughs> after Nia. That's just a box of Gucci that he just got shipped to him. It's just like, here's your fit. That's what Anthony Davis gets. That's how okay. nice he is. I do want to say something about RJ's outfit because we were talking about this earlier. Now, it's good. It's solid. But I would say that he should have gotten the matching pants. It would have completed the fit. There are it looks incomplete, there in my opinion. There are certain blazers and certain dinner jackets. Because this is a dinner jacket. This isn't just a suit. This okay. is a dinner jacket. Okay. Uh -huh. So they don't always do like matching pants with the dinner jacket. But there I'll, are matching pants. I, I, I'll talk to Tom Ford and see, you know, hey, Tom, do you have something in my my length with my inseam? You know, we'll, we'll talk to him to see if he can get something. But I don't know. We got to discuss it with Tom. Just, you know, <laughs> <laughs> just over here just wanting money. It's fine. It's fine. Okay, guys. Uh, so you're old. Yes. All right. So we're going to play a little game called Back in My Day. It's an in-season tournament. As it comes to a close, uh, we're going to name a champion, obviously. So we're thinking of what this tournament would have looked like back in your day. Okay. It was created when you were in your prime. So give us a little perspective here. And Brian, you're going to chime in as well. How do you think your early 2000 Nets team would do in this kind of tournament? Oh, we 100% would win this. We would win this, right? The team that we lost to, the Lakers in the finals, we all know Shaq didn't start playing basketball until game like 25. And you can tell him I said that. You know so, Lucius Harris yeah. would have dominated this event. Oh, 100%. <laughs> and the way we run, we would have been like a more aggressive Pacers team. We would have been putting up points. We've been going crazy. And like I said, 
we like Shaq, he was the dominant force there, but ultimately Shaq hey. didn't really start playing until hey. about 20, Christine, 25 minutes. They would have had no season. chance. They would have been, they're barely breaking 90 points back then. <laughs> well, everyone was. Everyone well, was barely breaking We're talking about 90s. now. Oh, yeah. now. Oh, yeah, now? would you be able to play now? Oh, 100%. First of all, our defense <laughs> tops in the league. If you had the number one defense in any era, then you know how to play. Okay. And we ran. We couldn't shoot threes, but we were going to run. We were going to defend. We were going to be a problem. Lakers can't shoot threes, and they're here. That's true. Yeah. Okay. All right, we'll take it. Let's go to the 96 Bulls because I feel like all I can think of is Dennis Rodman in Vegas. Yeah. How do you feel like that would have gone down? Uh, that Honestly, there's a lot of things that players were able to do pre-social media. Pre-social media before everyone knew where you were and what you were doing. Uh, I don't know how well they would have done it. If the 96 Bulls would have been here, there would be somebody still looking for, uh, <laughs> for Dennis Rodman. No, you, want, you don't want to know why they wouldn't be? Why? He would be on that runway, brother. He would be walking that runway That's in true. feathers. That's true. And sequins, and good no goodness knows what That's kind of color true. hair. Feathers and sequins. That would have been in Richard's one way for yeah. sure. Uh, okay, you just mentioned Shaq not too long ago. Okay. How do you feel like he, you know, he was a dominant, very physical player, would have yeah. played in this tournament? Man, I get tired of people saying that Shaq couldn't have played in this era. Shaq would have dominated any era of basketball he would have played in. Make, under, make no mistake, you had to change your roster. You had to have two or three extra big men to guard Shaq. That limits how many guards, that limits how many smalls. And so all of a sudden, he was going to be a person that would have adjusted the game. You can't have some small guarding him. Would Shaq shoot threes? No. No. That stretch the floor. People would be going, Shaq, Shaq's got to stretch the floor. <laughs> no, not a chance. Not a chance. You don't need to shoot three. Okay, Richard, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Find some pants that match I'm your, going to your it. suit. I'm going to text you. I'm okay, you. okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Have a, enjoy the game. Have a good time in Vegas. Right. You know, don't do anything too crazy. <laughs> okay, so as you guys know, we got the Lakers and the Pacers. The players talked it up at Media Day. Take a listen. He's the all time leading scorer. Um, you know, and if there if there's a Mount Rushmore, he's he's one of the guys on 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 the NBA Mount Rushmore, and that's that's what we're up against. Like any kid born in 2000, LeBron was my favorite player growing up. I was a Cavs fan, then a Heat fan, then a Cavs fan again, then a Lakers fan before I got drafted. Coming out with, a, with an aggressive mindset will definitely be, you know, the first and foremost thing that we do. It's like a cheat code having this environment, having this feel. I think it's, 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 it's good for, for the NBA. You know, anytime you can win a championship, you know, it goes well for, you know, your your morale, you know, your organization, I mean, the team. If we could, you know, win every game, that's all I really care about. For us, we're not supposed to be here, and nobody expected us to be here. We've been probably looked at to lose the majority of our tournament games. You're in the process of making the climb, and you want great experience. I mean, this is the kind of challenge that you that you got to love. And you know he can't talk because he has a mascot. But I will say, you smell really good, Boomer. You do. So you, you obviously wash your body. <laughs> smell great. Um, so Boomer, of you course. Are you with Boomer? <laughs> I, listen, I usually hate mascots, but you're not scary. So we can, we can vibe a little bit. We can vibe a little bit. Um, OK, so you're obviously very athletic um, and very acrobatic. So we're going to have you grade some dunks that we've seen at the end season tournament. So you have these cards right here that will grade up. And we're going to walk through them. All right, you ready? He's ready. We're going to start with Giannis Antetokounmpo down the lane, throwing it down, a one-handed hammer. Ryan, I mean, this is a really good one, right? Yeah, that was pretty awesome. I think it was against the Pacers, though. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately. So I don't know how Boomer's going to feel about this one. I feel like Boomer might not have noticed that. No, I'm just kidding. You can see, too. So uh, you can't talk. You can see. So how would you, how would you grade that dunk? You have your cards here. How would you grade that? Oh. <laughs> just only because it was against your team. But you guys are in the championship. You know Giannis isn't, right? OK, OK, just making sure. All right, next up, we have the Lakers' Maxwell Lewis. A near dunk, and he tried his best to salvage it at the end while hanging on to the rim. He tried. He tried. That's, that's still very acrobatic, very athletic. See, the thing about this, course. this is the definition of failing. Right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. How do you feel about that one, Boomer? A C? Oh, okay. th this is That's an insult awful. to Giannis. What? It's an insult to Giannis. 
That's true. That's very true. He was just salty about that one. <laughs> hey, the Pacers are 2-0 against the Bucks this year. That's true. 2 -0. That's true. All right, now let's go to Miles Turner. That's Miles Turner. Um, I know which way you'll probably lean on this one, but of course, no bias here, right, Boomer? You can't be biased in this one. And this one, of course, Why do I think Giannis. Giannis is gonna take it on the chin again here? <laughs> so, Boomer, how do you grade, how do you grade this one? He's strong, of course. Oh, look at all those pluses. Oh, wow, a lot of pluses there. I don't even think that's an actual grade, but we'll take it. We have a bonus one for you, also. This is you. Uh-oh. Now we get to grade this it. This is uh, over 10 years ago. Looks like you're at a high school gym. <laughs> it does. Also, why does this footage look so old? Whoa. Hey -oh. Whoa. Wait a minute. Shattering the rib. Wait a minute. You're stronger than I think I thought you were, Boomer. Ryan, how would you, I how would you grade I smell shenanigans. <laughs> I what smell shenanigans. Mean? What does that mean? I mean, I'm impressed you didn't get hurt on that, Boomer. Great job. Great job. <laughs> All right, Boomer, how do you think your team's going to do tonight? Does that mean win? Boomer, do you get 500 grand? Do you get 500 grand oh, yeah. if the Pacers win? <laughs> how much? Yeah. You should get more than that because I feel like you're holding down the team in another way. All right, thank Boomer's you Boomer's so worked Boomer. very hard the last few years. He doesn't have to work as right, hard he's now. He's been dunking for 10 years. It's great. Okay, so uh, Wendy got to sit down with Cam Reddish. It was a really good conversation, right? We loved it. All right, let's take a listen. Now we're joined by the Los Angeles Lakers' Cam Reddish. What was it like in the locker room uh, on Thursday night when you guys got that big win over the Pelicans? It was an exciting moment for a few moments, but, you know, uh, Brian kind of brought us back to earth and got one more to go. How different is it being a Laker? Because you've played in big markets. It's a lot of cameras. It's a lot of, there's a lot of cameras. Uh, I mean, obviously, you got LeBron. I mean, there's a lot of stuff around it, but... I think we have a really good group of guys. I mean, the locker room doesn't seem like that. You know what I mean? So, I mean, it's been fun. Obviously, you walk outside the locker room, like I said, cameras. But yeah. other than that, man, it's just basketball. Darvin Ham, your coach, he, from day one, as far as I can see, really has believed in you to be like a defensive guy. You can be like a, a star at that end of the court. How has that made a difference to you in, in the process with, with the coach and him showing that kind of faith in you? It's made a huge difference, man. I mean, he gave me a chance. And I'm extremely appreciative of it. So I just go out there and give 110% every chance I get, especially defensively. I'm just, you know, giving my all. He gives me the freedom to kind of, you know, kind of do it my way uh, defensively and um, use my instincts and stuff like that. So, man, I'm, I'm just looking forward to, you know, what's to come. You've talked about the how LeBron's trusted you and the way he's sort of been a leader. What is it like to play with LeBron? My experience has been great. I mean, I've had a ton of fun. Um, I've learned a lot. I mean, even off the court, you know, just the way he you know, takes care of himself. Great dude to be around, all all fun. So, I mean, I've had a, I think it's been been great. All right. Well, thanks, Cam. Good luck, and um, I hope you uh, have a great rest of the season. Appreciate that. It's also V Week here at ESPN when we partner with the V Foundation to highlight the urgent need for cancer research. You can join the fight against cancer by visiting v.org slash donate. 100% of your donation goes directly to cancer research. All right, now we welcome in the one, the only, Dave McMiniman to the show. So great to see you. Great to see you. Great to see you. Uh, I want to talk a little, we're going to talk about this matchup, obviously, it's a championship, but I do want to talk a little bit about the in-season tournament as a whole, because a lot of people didn't know what to expect. A lot of people were very skeptical about the in-season tournament. As we've kind of seen it play out, what has impressed you the most about what they've been able to do? Well, I've been there for all the Laker games thus far, 6-0 and through the tournament. Started on a Friday night in Phoenix, coming off a three-game losing streak. LeBron James hurts his left leg early in the game, stays in. They come out, they grind it out, and they win it. And their intent, their effort, their execution has only grown since then. I think this came around at the right time for a Lakers team that was kind of riding high on the hog after last year's success. They kind of slept walk through the preseason. They got a wake up call with that early losing streak. And as they've gotten better as a group, this in season tournament has validated that improvement. You know, I can't say enough about how serious LeBron is taking this. I don't know if you just heard there, we just talked to Cam Reddish from yesterday. And one of the things that Cam was talking about was immediately after they won that game with the Pelicans, they had a 40 point win, they're in Vegas, they got a day off. 
LeBron got right in their faces when they got in that locker room and was like, we haven't won anything yet. We're going to start thinking about Saturday. So LeBron was acting like this was like right. game. They won game three of a playoff series. And also a few minutes ago, LeBron was out here. You should have seen the care that LeBron was taking selecting the game ball. That's one of the things yeah, yeah. that the game captain does. I kind of feel, Dave, that LeBron doesn't do that for like normal December games. He leaves that for like, you know, DeAndre Max Russell, Christie, sure. Max Christie. <laughs> LeBron went through several game balls. He liked none of them that the referee had presented to him. Then he came down and took a ball from one of his teammates and said, we're going to use this one. <laughs> LeBron is not messing around. That has been clear this whole week for sure. Right. I think it's absolutely setting a tone for the Lakers. I think they have so benefited from that. And to me, what the thing about this is, is obviously after tonight, somebody's going to have the trophy and somebody's not. Right. But going forward, what does it mean? What does it mean for the Pacers going forward? What does it mean for the Lakers going forward? The Lakers have had an awesome week, and it's obviously been driven by LeBron. Yeah, it's been really fun to watch. Uh, do you feel like that hope helps the league overall? Because I, I feel like, like you mentioned, LeBron obviously is seriously buying into this. Maybe not all players, when they were coming into the season, were buying into it as much. What do you think that means for the league moving forward? Sometimes to be a leader means putting yourself out there before yeah. the trend has established whether it's cool or not. Yeah. The Lakers, when you show effort, that's not being cool. That's going for it. That's right. Rudy in practice, right? And the Lakers, even though LeBron is in year 21, even though he has the four regular season MVPs, four finals MVPs, four championships, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, it meant something to him. You heard from Steph Curry's comments. It meant something to him. Yeah. That trickles down through the rest of the league. And right now, it's going to mean a lot to guys like Max Christie, who makes $1.7 million. Right. That's a third of his salary he can make in one day. A guy like Jackson Hayes, $2.1 million, a fourth of his salary in one day. Man, if I can make a fourth of my salary in one day, you're not going to see me right. probably until February <laughs> working another NBA game. I don't know about you guys. I know better than that, Dave. You can work every day. I, I think what's interesting about you know th this moment is the players this was Adam Silver's idea right and the players really were going to make or break it and it wasn't like they had a meeting and we're like okay we do, what do we let's take a vote do we like this in season tournament or not it was going to be the leaders right and the leaders decided that it mattered and like that made the fans care about it matter the ratings have been good and here we are on Saturday night the first in season tournament final we have the Lakers in it. Yeah. That says it all because LeBron cares about it. So, and, and, and then you have the opportunity for Tyrese Halliburton, who had never played in on TNT until Monday in his whole career. Monday, he plays on Monday and then on Thursday has two of the best games back to back we've ever seen a guard right. have in the modern era. Right. What a great opportunity for him. That is exactly what this tournament is about. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about Tyrese because we talked earlier about how he was a superstar. He's really shown that this season. Uh, how exactly are the Lakers going to be able to show him, slow him down? Well, we saw a little bit of the game plan in their quarterfinals win against the Phoenix Suns. Uh -huh. Devin Booker is having his best career season thus far as a combo playmaker guard. And they were able to corral him, put big bodies in front of him. The Lakers are in a good spot when it comes to health because they have Jared Vanderbilt back. They have Rui Hachimura back. They have Torin and Prince who's playing the best ball of the season thus far for the Lakers. Uh, they can throw multiple bodies. Cam Reddish is healthy and give him different looks. And then ultimately, the Lakers have to not worry too much about playing the Indiana Pacers style right. of play. If they get an up and down game, it's going to spell death for the Los Angeles Lakers yeah. tonight. Take care of the basketball, right. run your sets, establish Anthony Davis in the paint down low to begin things off. Because if you can get in the foul trouble with Miles Turner, that's a pretty thin front line behind him. Absolutely. Slow the game down. The Lakers, number one thing, don't let the Pacers get behind them. So many times in that semifinal, the Bucks let the Pacers get behind them, even after made baskets. It's a big part of the Pacers game. I agree. The, the, the Pacers are a poor defensive team. They're a very, very, very poor defending the paint. They're okay at the rim, but they you can get the ball in the paint very easily against them. Guess what? Guess who like the second best paint score in the NBA is this year? He wears number 23. Giannis War is number one. They were able to overcome Giannis the other night, but LeBron can get that going. The other thing is, the Pacers uh, really, really try to defend the three-point line. They really don't even want to give them up, give it up. Well, the Lakers are not a good three-point shooting team. The Lakers are a team that you know needs to protect the ball inside. Yeah. So if the Pacers are going to defend that three-point line and give you the paint, 
go take it. That's the Lakers game plan for tonight. Okay, let's talk about uh, Anthony Davis, right? Obviously, that's going to be Miles, Miles he's Turner. He's three feet behind yeah, you he right is. now. Yeah, he's right here. Let's talk about this guy right here. Uh, Miles Turner is going to have to match up against him. How do you see this matchup playing out? I mean, Anthony Davis is not a point guard. As well as right. he can dribble the ball and take a long defensive rebound or a steal deflection and run the break, he needs his teammates to get him the ball. And the Lakers, when they've been intentional in the half court, Anthony Davis has bigger games. Now, the Lakers do have a bunch of guys who know how to play random, who know how to play fast break, and they need that, that to be a part of their game as well. But you need to feed the big man. You're going to get a better effort from him on the other end if he starts feeling involved on the offensive end. And certainly, Miles Turner, as big and as athletic as he is, right. Anthony Davis can put the ball on the floor, get by him, and Miles Turner's going to have to foul him or give it a bucket. The Pacers are the fastest team in the league. They right. run, run, run. Anthony Davis is the key to slowing the game down. Every time the ball goes to him and you slow the game down, that's advantage Lakers. That's absolutely got to be a big part of their game plan, and he should dominate. LeBron should have a great game tonight. Anthony Davis should have a great game tonight. The Pacers are formidable. They're going to they're playing with a lot of confidence. They've had a lot of great wins coming here. They beat the Cavs. They beat the Sixers. They beat the, the Celtics. They beat the Bucks. They have played great. But the Lakers have the formula to win this game. They just got to follow it. Okay, you said the Pacers are formidable. Uh, obviously, you just mentioned all the wins that they've had in this in-season tournament. Do we feel like the Pacers could possibly be title contenders? Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> no, whoa. they cannot. Be. Where's the emergency break on that? <laughs> they haven't even made the postseason right. since 2020 yeah, exactly. with TJ Warren uh -huh. in the bubble. Let's start there. <laughs> Let's say this will be a sign uh -huh. that we will see Indiana hosting a playoff game again this spring. And that's a great place to see a playoff game. It's a great crowd. We're going to say that's going to happen. I'm not going even close to probably even the second round quite Well, yet. here's the thing. Other than the in-season tournament game, the Pacers are under 500. By the way, the Lakers haven't been dominant without in at the in-season uh -huh. tournament as well, but their resume is a little bit more developed. So the Pacers have a lot of work to do. This kind of reminds me, you were talking about the bubble a second ago. Remember the Phoenix Suns in the bubble? They went 6-0. They right. missed the playoffs. Yeah. But it was a huge step forward for them. And the next year, they win like 50-something games, or, right. and they end up in the NBA Finals. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen next year, but I think this is sort of the year before the year for the Pacers. This is sort of the accomplishment before the accomplishment. Okay. Let's see if they can spring to that to get to the play-in or something right, like that. Right, right. Okay, so both of these teams obviously have different motivations to win the in-season tournament. Uh, who do you think it's more important to win when it comes to these two teams? I think Indiana, just based on the makeup of their roster, Bruce Brown, of course, won a championship last year at right. the Denver Nuggets, but several of their key contributors haven't even played in the playoffs yeah. yet. So for them to be able to say that I went toe-to-toe -to -toe with LeBron James and the right. Lakers and came away the winner and put a little extra money in my pocket when I haven't been in the league as long to accrue all that salary, I think it's going to mean more to them going forward. Not that the Lakers don't think that this is a big deal either, but right. a little bit more to the Pacers. It means more to the Pacers. They are absolutely having a blast this week, but LeBron James wants it. And look, he doesn't bet a 1,000 when he wants it, but when he wants it, he's pretty good. And here's something else. He has won eight consecutive winner-take-all games, game sevens, play-in tournament games, in-season tournament games. Look, I know he has not always done the, the greatest un, un, unstoppable in the playoffs because his teams always haven't been the better team. But in a winner-take-all game, LeBron James has been arguably the best player in the modern era. This is a winner-take-all game. Yeah. LeBron wants it. How can you not respect that and say that, he, that the Lakers are going to follow suit? All right, so we got the Pacers, the young guys, the fast guys, right? Then you got the Lakers, the slow guys, the old guys. Who do you have winning in this matchup? Well, on behalf of all <laughs> slow old men out there, <laughs> give me the Lakers. They didn't come here to lose. LeBron didn't come here to lose, as Brian mentioned. Back, you have to go back to 2008 since LeBron lost a game in this scenario. I'm going Lakers. Yeah, I was also slow when I was young. <laughs> but um, there's no way that the LeBron's not going to bring it. It may not be enough. I think LeBron plays great. I think the Lakers win. I think it's a great game all the way to the end. I am excited to watch LeBron in this moment. We've got to see this a lot of times. It's not going to make, you know, the top 10 in his career, but he cares. 
and it's great to watch that in December in the NBA. Yeah, it's definitely been very fun to watch, and the in-season tournament has been very fun to watch in general, so we'll see what happens in that one. We got the Lakers and the Pacers going at it very shortly. Thanks for watching Hoop Streams live from Las Vegas. We'll see you guys next time. Enjoy the game.